This footage comes from a poacher's camera. It's not clear whether the dog survived hitting a piece of farm machinery. Pooch is dead. No way. The poaching problem has grown across the country over the past few years and Northumbria police are cracking down on it. I'm about eight minutes out. It's about 11.30 on a Wednesday night and Operation Checkpoint is in full swing. It's a programme that began about three years ago that brings in volunteers from farms and estates to help combat crime in the countryside. Tonight we're going to um, do a rural crime operation. Um, it's called Operation Checkpoint. It's part of a, a national and a regional operation uh, where basically it's targeting criminality in the, in the rural areas. That could be anything from travelling rural criminals, looking to steal things like ATVs, um, to, to your poach offences. Generally people tend to th think of a, of a poach as being a bit like green grass taking one for the pot, you know, well that's, that's very much not the case. Um, we are seeing a bit, a bit of, you know, there is an element of some kids who've come out and they, and they might, might, be, um, might be doing it for a bit of a laugh, but the vast majority of the poaching that we see is they, they do have links to organised criminality. They are out um, scoping things out, they will use it as an excuse to look at, you know, a quad bike. As we've shown previously on Field Sports Britain, poaching gangs across the country break into fields and go after anything they see. Besides the illegal killing of animals, the culprits are showing off their dogs. A good dog can be worth a lot of money to them, and a lot of, there's a lot of kudos attached to, to a good dog. If they do stop a car, and quite clearly they're all poaching, they've got, um, they've got um, game in the car, they've got dogs in the car, they've got lamps. Um, we'll seize everything, we'll seize the car and we'll also seize the dogs. The Rural Crime Volunteers will plot up in basically areas where they've got a vantage point so they can look across the land and see what's going on in their patches. They'll, they'll go to places where they know they've been targeted before for where, for example, you've had um, locks on gates to fields being cut and stuff like that. First stop on any patrol is meeting the volunteers. We've given all the volunteers like a point to come collect the radio. We'll collect them back up at the end of the night. So the minute Alex is just uh, dishing out the radios there, um, writing down who's got what radio so we can collect them in and we are sort of accountable. We ask them why you're doing it and they say, well, basically because, um, you know, I can either sit at home and moan about it or I can actually try and help and do something about it. And that's the general attitude, you always get that answer. A problem they have is the size of the area. More trained volunteers means more people qualified to stand up in court to give evidence after suspected poachers have been caught. It's difficult to prove what they've actually been doing and you'll generally get some like rubbish story, uh, you know, that's made up and, and yes, you can pick it apart to an extent, but again, we've always got that, um, that difficulty in that we've got to prove everything we do beyond reasonable doubt it's got to stand up to scrutiny in court and it's got to be if, if that person has a story that sort of could be half truth the chances are they're not going to get convicted of court. Ian spots a van one of the types of vehicles they look out for as they are often used in quad bike thefts. Control from 1071. I have a um, vehicle check on a red transit. It turns out the van is registered to a house in the area, so we move on. Throughout the night, there are other reports of suspicious vehicles. A volunteer calls in a car on a remote road, but it's just three young men getting stoned. So far, no sign of poachers. The lamp, um, usually um, after the deer and uh, the hares, um, especially these fields here, because you've got roads right the way around them. So they're easy accessible. Um, farmer was telling us a couple of weeks ago that he found dead hares on the on the field, um, tire marks on the, you know on on the on the fields, making just such a mess. Um, but they're going after anything, anything we get our hands on. Don't get me wrong, we're, we're culling deer on the estate. They're a sort of they're a, they're a pest in a sense. So so from a wildlife perspective, it's not a massive loss, but. There is a massive loss in terms of how they're being killed, which is pretty tragic, and the carcasses just get left. You know, it's, it's a long way from this, well, I want some venison, so I'm going to kill a deer. It's kill it, take a picture of it, and leave it. It was a lot worse two or three years ago. Um, the initiative that had been started by the police and the rural crime volunteers has definitely um, paid dividends to, um, to that work. But, yeah, it's ongoing. There's always, there's always uh, people willing to try and... To, 
break the law. And then I guess probably the most costly damage is the damage to the gates. So, you know, it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. You, you put a gate in to stop them coming into these fields, you put a gate in, they smash the gates up and uh, you have to either replace the gates or find a different solution. So, For farmer John Goodfellow, poachers destroyed one gate too many. In the past we used to uh, padlock gates uh, and one day I went past a gate that had been padlocked and saw someone had chopped it off with an uh, angle grinder. So I went back a couple of days later to replace the padlock and the gates had been stolen. Uh, so at that point I realised gates were no longer going to solve the problem. And so John invented this poacher block, a concrete slab that stops cars getting into fields. The original casts didn't work quite right and I didn't know that there was a substance called releasing oil. So when I first poured the concrete into the mould I couldn't get the concrete back out again. So it was all a bit of a steep learning curve. but. Uh, it didn't take long before I had something that I knew was marketable. I spent a long time going around measuring different tractors and stuff because I wanted something universal that would fit all, all tractors, uh, which I couldn't quite do. Little tractors won't uh, have the clearance to, to go over, but uh, most tractors now are over 120 horsepower in, in there all right with it. In development at the minute is Poacher Gate, which is uh, the same block design, uh, but with gate posts built into it so that you could put it on a, a livestock situation. Back on patrol, Ian gets a call about a suspicious vehicle. We're just trying to get, we use an application called What Free Words, and um, so we're just trying to get a location where this uh, suspicious vehicle. Tweaked, as in we've tweaked where we're going, dot weeds, as in digging up unwanted plants, dot guitar, play a song. Then we're off. The car is several miles away, so Ian isn't wasting any time. The vehicle's shown no insurance on the Police National Computer, which is quite often a telltale sign of something that's up no good. It's got four persons in it, and it's from an area that will frequently get people travelling across to our area to, to do poaching and the like. So uh, there's about three or four units travelling there at the minute. About 20 minutes later, we're at the location. We're not the only ones there. Another two police cars and two volunteer vehicles. Hello, what is it? Oh, they're getting COVID. They're just yeah. legally green in and they've got insurance. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Is that actually like? Huh? Attitude? Can It turns out they do have insurance and illegally green laning or off road driving. But since there are four of them in the car, they're breaking coronavirus restrictions and each is slapped with a £200 fine. While it wasn't the result they were expecting, it did show the coordination between the cops and the volunteers is working. A better result comes about half an hour later when they stop a suspicious van that's carting off a quad bike. The Royal Crime Team, I might have put right on this, but it certainly seems to have grown uh, and they're taking much more sort of direct approach with the, the poachers, which is a massive help. And there's a knock-on effect of that. And obviously, you get more success when you're trying to you know, look after your patch. I think we've started something very special here. And uh, I think it's got a long way to go. And we've, we, we've got a lot to learn. And I think the police have got a lot to learn. And I think the joint collaboration that we're showing now is, is going a long way to um, reassuring rural, rural co communities that the police care.